and greetings from Chicago. Oh man, it is such an amazing city. I haven't been here in so long. So it just feels so good to be back. I mean, I just had to try to get this as my backdrop because it is like freezing outside. Um, instead of doing my video from the Adler Planetarium, so instead I'm gonna talk to you about an amazing topic that I've been wanting to discuss with you guys. Um, and I'm gonna talk about it over here. So it has to do with another supercomputer, by the way. I know I just released my Cafe Astro Athens video about a supercomputer that just did a bunch of simulations of black hole formations in the early universe. This one's a little bit different and it has to do with some crazy uh, streaks that we see on some planet in our solar system. Now the supercomputer is called Earth Simulator and it's usually used for a lot of determining the different weather that's actually here on Earth. But this time it was used for Venus. So the Earth Simulator and um, the research that was done about this actually comes from the Japanese spacecraft called Atakasuki. And they ended up analyzing and simulating the uh, atmosphere that was on Venus years ago, right? Trying to simulate, figure out what, what's going on in its atmosphere. And recently there were observations made that went hand in hand with this with these simulations, meaning the simulations were proven to be right. So what was found were, were this crazy thing known as planetary scale streak structures. Super crazy name, I've been practicing saying it all week. And pretty much it's found in the clouds in the atmosphere of Venus. And they stretch from the northern to the southern hemisphere diagonally by about 10,000 kilometers across the entire planet. Now, something to keep in mind about Venus. Venus is located much closer to the sun than we are and it is extremely hot. It's actually similar to Earth in size and quite similar to our gravity, but it rotates a lot slower. One rotation of Venus is about 243 Earth rotations. So one thing to keep in mind is this is what leads to something known as the runaway greenhouse effect. You guys have maybe heard about this before with the greenhouse effect here on Earth that like occasionally, you know, if, if we start building up too much carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, the atmosphere starts to get thicker and it starts to trap in the sun's radiation and starts to heat the planet up. That's exactly what's happening with Venus and it's only increasing. So Venus has like very thick methane and ethane clouds and what's happening is there's so the sun's radiation is coming in heating up the planet and instead of irradiating back into space it's getting trapped under those clouds hence increasing the temperature the surface temperature of Venus making it so hot and unbearable. So what's interesting about this is that um, years ago the Earth simulator was using so what we usually want to do to determine what our weather on Earth and the meteorology on Earth we actually did that for Venus and the recent studies showed that the same exact thing that we simulated is was actually happening on Earth, on, on Venus. Something else to keep in mind is that Venus's atmosphere, which by the way is about 60 kilometers above the surface of Venus, it only rotates in every four Earth days and it moves at 360 kilometers per second. So this is actually known as atmospheric super rotation. So what's happening is that you have the atmosphere that's rotating faster than the planet itself. So that's hence why the name is uh, atmospheric super rotation. Now because of this, it's usually really difficult for any type of Earth-based telescopes um, or even orbiters of Venus to actually make observations of the surface of Venus because these thick sulfuric acid clouds that are like around 45 to 70 kilometers above the surface are just blocking the way. We can't see anything. By the way, the surface temperature of Venus is about 460 degrees Celsius, 860 degrees Fahrenheit, 860 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh. It is so beyond hot on Venus. It's insane. Now the way that the Japanese spacecraft Atakasuki did this was they actually were revealing the lower cloud structures, the lower cloud structures of Venus, um, not the upper, the lower ones using the spacecraft's infrared camera known as IR2. The reason they did this was because any type of ultraviolet or optical waves are actually blocked by the upper cloud layers, so they had to do it in infrared, which is a longer wavelength, by the way. And it's very similar to how actually weather people and scientists calculate or even predict weather conditions for here on Earth. This right here is a direct comparison between the simulation that was made by AFES, um, which by the way is the Japanese space program that actually is working on making the simulations, 
and then comparing it to the actual collected data from Atakasugi spacecraft from the IR2 camera, which is that infrared um, camera that I mentioned. Look at that comparison. It is directly like it is directly the same. It is a direct comparison. Um, and this is just incredible, the fact of, of that we were able to use technology that you usually use for here on Earth. And we used it for Venus. Like, I just think that that's the most like fascinating thing ever. I mean, if we're able to do this with not only Earth, but also with Venus, imagine how many other planets we probably can do this with as well. Use these comparisons, use these types of supercomputers and simulators to understand what's happening on other planets and maybe even the moons. Oh my gosh, I would love to see what's going on on Enceladus. More details about Enceladus and Europa. Okay, now these planetary scale streak structures, they're, they're cool and all, but like why in the world should we even care and how did also they get there and why should we care how, we got, how they got there? For one, something similar like that happens here on Earth. So we wanna understand more about our atmosphere, more about our climate. Maybe we can do that through analyzing Venus more. Two, the way that it probably got there was through two different types of wave flux fluctuations, as well as baroclinic instability and jet streams. Crazy, crazy names, but those things actually happen here on Earth. So to explain baroclinic instability, pretty much you have um, mid and high latitudes, like here on Earth, where there's opposite wind directions happening. This actually causes baroclinic instability, that's what that is, it's the, it's the opposite directions of winds, causing cyclones, causing things like polar jet streams, causing instabilities, causing major changes um, actually that we see in our climate here on Earth. The same thing is actually happening on Venus. So it's interesting because we see such similar wind structures and cloud structures, even though we're made of a little bit different elements than Venus, we do contain quite a lot of the same commonalities. You find this most similar things as well happening between this planet and that. So you're seeing this, this comparison happening and I just think that it's such interesting research and it's something that can really launch us forward to future research. So I'm gonna show you the images again and go over the results with you guys. So looking at these photos, the result ended up being that the mechanisms that work in the cloud layers of Venus suggest that the jet streams may have been formed at higher latitudes. And so now at lower latitudes, maybe there was some type of atmospheric wave due to the disturbance of the large scale flows and then the planetary rotation effect, which is also known as the Rosby wave. Those two combined end up generating large vortices across the entire equator to around 60 degrees in both directions, north and south. Speaking of vortices again, as I was talking about it during the polar vortex and then the vortices on um, Neptune in my video I did, this is starting to happen on Venus. And maybe it's been happening for a while, but we're just starting to notice it now. This is so important for just understanding how atmospheres vary between all the planets in our solar system. Because you see this and you're noticing now that like these vortices are happening from, from a changing in wind direction and, <clears throat> and the atmosphere rotating one way, the planet rotating in the other way. And then you have these like changes in, in, in wind directions and speeds. Oh man, it's just like, it's so fascinating. The fact, to me, again, what, what really blows my mind is the fact that we ended up using research. We ended up using simulators that we were supposed to be using here on Earth. We still use for here on Earth for our own weather. And it was, it's totally applicable to Venus. You know, that just goes to show too that like our neighboring planets truly are part of our family. They are similar composition to us similar size to a similar gravity and now similar atmosphere. So that pretty much sums up the planetary scale streak structures that I wanted to talk with you guys about. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. I gotta head out now and go into this snowy uh, Chicago weather. Um, but I had so much fun telling you guys all about this. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see some more videos, be sure to hit subscribe so I know you guys like this. And if you like the video, also, give it a thumbs up. That would be that would be really really cool. Um, and I, I really love reading through your comments. So definitely, like, feel free to just like bombard me with comments. Like, I mean, I I really enjoy actually reading through them, commenting back. You guys have some great conversations to have. Um, I think some of my favorite conversations I've started through the comments on YouTube have actually been about like time travel and like how we actually can access the other dimensions through like quantum teleportation. Oh my gosh, it's like one of my favorite things. I love quantum mechanics. Um, I, I think it's time for, for another quantum, quantum mechanics video. I haven't done one in a while. I'm also losing my voice just a little bit. Um, I've been doing a lot of talking out here. 
So I will talk to you guys soon. And next time, hopefully, I will be shooting from the Adler Planetarium if it gets nicer weather out soon. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.